So in our degree program, we've got a couple different areas of emphasis. Civil engineering kind of emphasizes structural engineering, geotechnical engineering, water resources engineering, and environmental engineering. Those are kind of our four strengths or our pillars in our department. In there, we also have transportation engineering and sustainability or sustainable engineering in our curriculum. Concrete has a huge environmental impact. And one way we can reduce that impact is by including what are called supplementary cementitious materials, which is taking away cement out of the concrete and replacing it with something else that basically uses less energy. And so what we're trying to do here is to create a more sustainable future using smart materials. So I love working with undergrads like Duncan because they really have a curiosity. They come into the lab and they're completely open to new ideas and to exploring new ways of looking at the world. So something I like about undergrad research since I started, um, I get to learn a lot of things that I didn't think I'd ever learn in probably school. And it gives me more of a hands-on experience because I'm more of a hands-on student than an in-classroom student. So this gives me more opportunities um, to further my learning outside of the classroom. So this research is research on what is called fiber-reinforced syntactic foams. Um, the goal of this is to make a, a low-density, high-strength material, a composite material. If we think about extreme applications where you'd actually maybe be using some of this stuff, um, one's one application of space. And so we've, one, of the, one of the interests for NASA is going back to the moon again, if they're going to build a lunar habitat or a space lab, um, you've got to ship materials there or use materials that are on the moon. And it costs roughly $30,000 per pound to ship something to the moon, right? So we're, we're thinking about how can we get materials that are very lightweight on the moon, extreme temperatures, 250 degrees Fahrenheit positive to negative 250. That's a huge range. How do you keep an environment or a building warm or cool in those environments? So this could be a possible application. Like this is kind of unique to minds that I, as a freshman undergraduate, I'm an undergraduate researcher, like that doesn't happen. And then I get to do this. This is one of the reasons why I came here. I was kind of hoping to maybe get involved with undergraduate research at Mines, but it, I figured it'd be like maybe junior or senior year, but it happened this year, so. We are trying to um, develop some um, new technology for water treatment uh, because um, some of the emerging contaminants cannot be effectively removed in our conventional water treatment process. So that's, uh, what, that's why we are working on developing some new carbon materials for water treatment and that is what Katie is working on. So when people go and get x-rays, diatrozoa is not absorbed through the human body, so it passes right through and goes directly to the wastewater treatment plants. But the wastewater treatment plants cannot process it, so it goes directly into freshwater systems, which then are used for drinking water. When you go to supermarket, when you're at home, there are so many water that we can drink. Bottled water, alkaline water, tap water, filtered water, we can buy Brita filter and to filter our tap water. So, which water should we drink? And which water is the best for our health? That's something that we are trying to figure out. I'm very passionate about environmental engineering. I'm going to be having an emphasis in that. So when this opportunity was presented to me, I was very excited and it's just cool to learn new things and be able to hopefully help some people. I saw that the professors really cared. They want each individual student to get a career in the field. And not only that, but just have a successful life. So that made me want to come to this school. We've got two distinct curriculums, a traditional civil curriculum, but we also have an environmental engineering specialization that's more chemistry focused on that side. And so between those, uh, you're both eligible to sit for the FE exam and to be successful as a practicing civil and environmental engineer. So maybe Heidi, tell us about the first year class and experiences that we have in our, in our program. Well, we recognize that students don't always know what they're getting into when they choose their degree and their degree program. It's a big, scary decision. So what we try to do is introduce students to all of the different subdisciplines and pillars within civil and environmental engineering. Um, meet their professors. The professors from each area of specialization will introduce those topics to the students. 
And then we'll have professional engineers from the community who are practicing in those areas of study visit with the students. And also, really, how to do things like pay their parking tickets and deal with the day-to-day -day life change that living on campus brings. So our students uh, do a lot of internships, and so we typically have a fall career fair sometime in September, and in the spring, it's usually in February, and the students, uh, just about, I'd say 90 to 95% of our students are doing summer internships uh, in between, even after their first year, freshman year. And so they get to work and figure out what they want to do in their career, perhaps what they don't want to do in their career as well. And so they're able to do, uh, you know, working with government agencies, state agencies, a lot of consulting firms uh, to get those hands-on practical experience. And a lot of times those uh, companies make offers to those students uh, that are doing the summer internships even before they graduate. One of the advantages that you have with a civil degree is that there's jobs everywhere. Whether you want to live in a rural community or whether you want to live in the big city, chances are if you put your finger on a map, they're going to need a civil engineer there. If you have any questions with that, follow up with me, send me a note, uh, come see what we're all about here at the South Dakota School of Mines here in Civil and Environmental Engineering. We'd love to see you here.